Rebirth of a Genius. Creator, Destroyer Chapter 1 Dab 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 Footsteps of dozens of men running can be heard in the corridor. A young and handsome army officer is running in front followed by dozens of soldiers in uniforms, fully equipped with guns. Quick, we have to catch him before it's too late. The young officer commanded his subordinates in an anxious tone. After taking a turn they saw a corridor which had a large room on the other side. Everyone increased their pace and the young officer quickly opened the large door and entered the room. What they saw almost made them puke their guts out. A bloody stench invaded their nostrils and the room is littered with corpses of dozens of armed men. One look and they recognized them as a private force. For visiting. The soldiers who entered the room are special forces of USA and they saw many bloody scenes. Even they created many bloody scenes. But what is in their sight gave even these soldiers chills. Every corpse has a face full of fear and agony and not a single person is without a protruded bone. Yes, protruded bones. Each and every person has at least one bone protruded from their bodies and some of them even had a bone shard pierced deeply into their eyes, throat, hearts and other vitals. These bone shards are taken from their limbs and ribs of their comrades which can be clearly understood after observing the limp arms and legs of some corpses. In midst of the corpses lying on the floor, there is a young man who seemed to be in his late twenties or early thirties standing with his upper body exposed. He has blood all over his body and face. There are some bullet wounds and blade scars on his well-defined muscles. His jet black hair is soaked in blood. His palms are equipped with a pair of weird claws. These claws only have sharp nails which resemble the wild beasts, made of metal and each nail is individually connected to a small disc-like thing on the back of his palm with small metal joints between which a type of string is passing through. If anyone doesn't know better, they would think that it is a normal metal string but it is a graphene string, the sharpest and the strongest thing in the world. Looking at the scene the young army officer stopped in his tracks and just stood there looking at the bloody figure. You finally came here Captain Richard. I was getting tired of waiting. The bloody figure said as he is still looking towards the window from where one can look at the vast ocean. You were waiting for me? The young and handsome army office replied in a somewhat surprised tone. Yeah, I was waiting for you. I want you to be the witness of my final masterpiece, so that you won't have to suffer from it. The bloody figure replied. Just surrender Sam. You can't run away anymore. Why are you making it so hard for yourself? Just follow me to Pentagon and you can live your rest of the life peacefully. I know you are angry, but your vengeance will shake the balance of the entire world power. I will help you negotiate with them to hand over whoever is responsible for the incident. Richard said without caring about the so-called masterpiece. Bah ha ha ha, do you really think it's that easy captain? Do you know who the culprits are? The heir of Rothschild clan, the heir of the McGregor clan, the prince of Morocco, the heir of Samarita family, the heir of Hestia house. Are you confident in getting me their heads? Sam answered while laughing. Listening to his words Richard was dumbstruck with shock. He knew the incident has something to do with these families, but he was unaware that it was related to the direct heirs of these families. He was at a loss of words. Before he could reply Sam continued. Richard, do you know how much I love her? The only girl who cared for me. The only person who didn't look down on my status as an orphan. But now she committed suicide due to jealousy and lust of these rich bastards. Do you know how I feel when I recall, that while I was working my ass off to save this fucking world from the global warming which they created without a care, the only person I love was brutally raped for 20 days straight and tortured until she committed suicide. Just because some rich bastards are jealous because their fathers compared me with them since we are of same age. Do you know how I feel? I hate myself. I hate all the titles I earned as a scientist, engineer, musician, painter, doctor, super soldier, hacker, inventor, weapon creator. I became so many things at this age of 25 but do you know what I really wanted to be? The greatest friend, the best brother a man could ever be. But all I became is a person with a broken heart and filled with a storm of hatred. Don't you dare try to convince me, if you don't know how I feel. Sam said coldly. His voice was filled with melancholy and resentment. Richard looked at Sam not knowing what to say at all. He clearly knows what this man before him represents. The bloody figure before him represents the pinnacle of genius, the greatest genius ever born in the history of mankind. 
An orphan in the streets of India became an existence who can look down on the world with disdain and contempt. He is an inventor, doctor, designer, painter, musician etc. He mastered each and every knowledge that he could access. He is not a jack of all trades but a master of all trades. And if it isn't enough, he is also a super soldier who could take on a whole battalion of armed soldiers alone. Nobody knew how he managed to do all these things but he did it. Looking at him Richard finally opened his mouth. I can't say I can understand your pain. But what I understand is that your life has been too short for all your capabilities to be shown to the world. The world hasn't seen enough of you. You are the greatest creator of the world Sam. But I don't think you already reached your limit. I will take you from here with force if I have to, to stop you from heading towards a dead end. You and I both know that if you get your revenge you will be hunted to the ends of the earth. Please, come with me Sam. Thank you, Richard but I can't go back now. I can't let go of those bastards after they forced my Stella to kill herself. After speaking he suddenly moved and pressed a button in front of a computer in the room. Everyone quickly surrounded him. The monitors in the room showed various locations of mansions factories, office buildings etc. Looking at them Richard's eyes widened with disbelief. Suddenly every building in the computer screen was hit by a seemingly humongous cane as they were completely destroyed. Everyone in the room were dumbfounded. The biggest consortium of the world and the secret rulers of the whole earth are destroyed just like that. Ha 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 ha. Sam started laughing maniacally. Finally, Stella you are avenged. There are thousands of people accompanying up th. Bam bam suddenly two gunshots were fired and interrupted his speech. Two bullet holes were formed in his already wounded body. Richard came out of his stupor and supported the body of falling Sam. Meanwhile everyone aimed their guns at the one who shot. He is a lackey of the consortium but he was too late to stop the destruction. Richard looked at Sam with endless regret in his eyes. Don't worry my friend I already lived my life to the fullest I hope with my life as an example these rich bastards will hold back and watch out. Sam said. I am sure they will. Richard said with assurance. Richard, as my only friend I will leave this lab as a parting gift to you. This is God's cane which I used just now. Please keep this alive and make sure every government will behave properly from now on. I want you to be the guardian of world Stella dreamt for before. Sam said. I will. Don't worry Sam. Richard replied. Before death I think I should change my title from the greatest creator to the greatest destroyer after all I just destroyed half the world's power with a single button. Sam said with smirk. No, Sam. You don't have to change because you will be the greatest creator and you will be the greatest destroyer of this world. Nobody world can challenge or dare to challenge that statement. Richard said with a smile. Ha ha that's true. Goodbye my friend. Sam said as he closed his eyes. Goodbye Sam. Richard said with tears in his eyes. At this moment all the soldier in the room aimed at the ceiling and shot three rounds as respect. They know what this man contributed for world. He created wonders to help mankind survive more time by removing the threat of global warming. He gave hope for so many people who can't even more due to their ailments. He is an existence which is living example of miracle but now that existence is dead the greatest creator, greatest destroyer, the greatest genius ever is dead. End of chapter 1. Chapter 2 Sam slowly opened his eyes only to see endless darkness around him. Ahead of him a few feet away there stood a young man who seemed to be in his early thirties as his gaze was directed towards him. The man has an extraordinary bearing to him that makes one feel as though they are watching a superior being. The handsome face, sword-like eyebrows, sharp gaze everything only made the bearing more majestic. Am I dead? Or am I still alive? Or is this a hallucination? Sam thought to himself. At this moment the majestic young man suddenly spoke. You are really dead. You are currently in your soul form which I captured. I am Ling Tien. So, you are saying that you captured my soul after I was shot dead? Sam asked with an astounded gaze. Yes. Ling Tien replied, why? Sam asked bewildered. He didn't get why he was still here and can't believe this situation. It all felt like a dream to him. He didn't believe a soul exists until now. Because I saw potential in you which was far from realized. Your previous world so small for your intelligence. So, I will give you a chance. A chance to realize your full potential. 
A chance to live again in a world where only your imagination can limit you. Ling Tien replied. There are other worlds with life? Sam was surprised again. Even when he is alive, he never felt this shocked in a single day. There are more things to be surprised about kid. This universe has more things to offer than you can imagine. You will learn it slowly. Ling Tien replied. Hearing that Sam was completely bewildered. Everything still felt like a dream to him. He went into deep thought. Well, I have nothing to lose anything anyway. Sure, but what should I do there? Sam asked, live your life to the fullest. Ascend the highest peak where you can look down on anyone under heavens. Then we meet again. Ling Tien replied. Sam seemed confused by the answer. Before I send you, I will give you some knowledge. They are language and some cultivation techniques you will require. You cannot pass down any of these techniques to anyone because they are specifically created for your body constitution and your spiritual core. Ling Tien continued. What are cultivation techniques? What is spiritual core you mentioned? Sam asked with confusion. Ha 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 don't worry you will know when you arrive into your new body. By the way there is a final test waiting for you down there that is to find the best contract around you as your first contract if you pass the test you have a present there. If you fail then think as I granted this life to you can live as you like and forget whatever I said earlier. After Ling Tien finished everything turned completely dark and Sam lost his consciousness. For visiting. When Sam opened his eyes again, he felt great headache as he saw clear blue sky and floating clouds. He felt a searing pain on his stomach as slowly moved to stand up and he observed his surroundings. He realized he is in the middle of some woods. The ground around was completely raised as if it was plowed. He checked his body when a searing pain increased at his abdomen. When he saw it clearly, he was shocked. There are two holes in his stomach as if he was stabbed by something. Each hole is around two inches wide. But for some reason blood stopped flowing from the holes. He stood there dazed for some time thinking if it was dream or not then suddenly a piercing headache started as a set of unknown memories entered mind. His soul entered the body of a 15-year-old boy whose name is also Sam. He doesn't have any last name because, he is an orphan. He is a tailor who lived in a nearby village named Lava Rock Village. He made a living off of his tailoring skills by selling clothes he made from the silk he obtained from the silk moths in the woods. As per his routine when he came to woods to collect silk, few kids of his age started running towards him. Only then realized that they were being chased by a bull-like beast. Then they purposefully directed the beast towards him and the beast pierced him with its horns and that's how the original owner died. Sam sighed as he thought. Guess I can't escape the fate of being an orphan in this lifetime too. As he thought up to this, he slowly made his way towards his village while enduring the pain. When he entered the village, he was shocked for some time when he saw the scene in front of him. The scene before reminded him of the medieval period. The streets are not clean at all. All the houses are made of mud walls and only some select few are made of stones in a certain area. Then something came to his mind. The good-looking multiple-story houses belong to the village officials, while the mansion belongs to village head. The average-looking house belongs to village guards and hunters or some relatively well-off families with rather highly regarded professions. Normal mud houses belong to farmers and labor and others. To his surprise even though the original Sam is an orphan he also has a stone house which is both his shop and his house. While Sam was walking towards his house all the people are watching him with surprised expressions and whispering to each other. Just when he reached his house and about to open his door, he heard someone calling him. Hey Sam, you are here. What happened to you exactly that Oliver said that a blazing earth bull killed you in the woods? A middleman from next door said as he was walking towards Sam. His name is Michael. He is a blacksmith who lives next door to Sam. When Sam saw him, he didn't know how to react as he knew from this body's memories that he had a very good relationship with him. Sam forced a smile as he answered. I am all right Uncle Michael. Don't worry about me arg. By the time he finished his words he felt his wounds hurting again. His face became pale as he sweated profusely. Easy kid. Michael reached him and held Sam with his hands as he was about to collapse. Damn it. Kid I thought that Oliver is talking nonsense but who would have thought it's real. The wound is too deep Sam I think only the healer mage can heal you. But that costs a lot. I don't even know how you are still alive. 
Uncle Michael please enter my room and take out the leather pouch under my bed. I will go to the healer. Sam said enduring his pain. Michael slowly made Sam lay on the floor and made his way into the house. After some time, he came back with a leather pouch in his hands. Sam, I don't think you can go alone just wait a bit I will get my pushcart. I will take you to the healer. After saying that, Michael went to his house and came back with a pushcart which he used to transfer his blacksmith products and materials. He carefully carried Sam and lay him on the cart and kept his leather pouch beside him and started pushing the cart. At this time, Sam slowly started losing his consciousness. Sam slowly opened his eyes only to see a ceiling made of stones. Oh, you are awake. Somebody said suddenly. Sam startled due to the sudden voice after he turned towards direction which from which voice came there. He saw a middle-aged man carrying a leather pouch with him then he recognized immediately that leather pouch belongs to himself. The man came towards the bed and gave back his leather pouch then said. This is your leather pouch, I took my treatment fee, the rest is within the pouch. Sam opened the pouch there he saw two stone size of a quail egg. You can leave when you feel that you are okay, the middle-aged man said. Suddenly the door opened and Michael came in. Oh, you are finally awake. How are you feeling now? Michael asked Sam. I am okay uncle, I think I just need some rest. Sam said. Actually, I heard about you from Oliver. He said you are already dead in the woods. That's why I came to check your house whether he is lying or not. But when I came you are already back and you are injured. But thank God you are okay. What happened exactly kid? Michael asked. I was really hit by the bull uncle but now I am okay. I don't why, but by the time I got there to collect the cocoons a bull madly rushed towards me and hit me. Even I don't know how I survived. Sam replied. He didn't see any reason for revealing it was done intentionally so he kept quiet. Uncle Michael the first would like to rest if you don't mind. Sam said, okay kid, don't worry about anything else, just take some rest. Goodbye I will visit you again. After Michael left Sam kept staring at the ceiling and tried to understand the situation he is in. According to the memories of original owner of the body, right now he is in a place called Desolate Land which is a part of Western continent. In this world the technology is not that developed compared to the modern Earth. The people took a completely different path of development because of special circumstances, that is the presence of spiritual energy. In this world there is a special kind of energy present everywhere in the atmosphere. And everything is made of spiritual energy the humans here possess unimaginable strength and power by utilizing this spiritual energy. They are called cultivators. There are two types of cultivator they are chi cultivators and mages. The chi cultivators use spiritual energy to develop their body and utilize their body to fight they are also called warriors whereas, the mages use spiritual energy by converting it into form of various elements. Right now, the middle-aged man who came earlier is also a mage in a mage of light element. The light element mages are not much known to their combat prowess but they are most suitable for healing and are highly regarded. That's why these healers usually charge a lot. In this world the being a mage or a warrior cannot be directly decided by people themselves. It depends on the body constitution and the spiritual core of the person. If a person has a pure chi core which is a solid white in color then they are most suitable for warriors. The person who is suitable to be a mage will have a pure elemental core. Various types of elements indicate various type of affinity to that particular element. For example, if a person has a pure red color core it will be fire element, a light blue indicates water core, pale green indicates wind, dark green indicates plants or wood, gold color indicates metal, milky white indicate light element and so on. Other than the pure mages or pure warriors there are other type of cultivators who has mixed core who can practice both chi and elements. They are basically called, warrior mages. When a person 14 years old their core will activate. Sam also activated his core last year but the problem is nobody could identify his core. His core is fully transparent when he tried to absorb spiritual energy, he can absorb it easily and he can also control it well but he was unable to use it for both spells or martial arts. So, he was not suitable for both types of cultivation so he stopped after he reached third level initiation stage and solely focused on his tailoring skills and achieved some significant improvements in embroidery. 
That's how he was able to earn the spiritual stones in his leather pouch. Even though they are low-grade spiritual stones they are totally high-level currency for normal people. For working hard for an entire year, he was only able to earn only five stones and three of them are already taken away by the healer as a fee for treatment. Thinking up to this point Sam heaved a huge sigh and closed his. Let's have a proper sleep first think about what to do tomorrow. Sam muttered under his breath and slowly fell asleep. End of chapter 2 Thank you for listening on Novelbot. Please subscribe Novelbot for more audiobooks on light novel. Comment the name of your favorite light novel to be converted to audiobook.